This is Joe Biden, the resident of the United States. Now, everyone knows that Joe Biden is a human gaffe machine. And since he took office back in January 2021, Biden has made bloopers, blunders, and gaffes on the daily. Here are some examples. Putin may circle Kyiv with tanks, but he'll never gain the hearts and souls of the Iranian people. Right now, in all 50 states in the District of Columbia. <laughs> well, I just want you to know, I may be Irish, but I'm not stupid. There are more corporations incorporated in America than every other state in America combined. Think about it. Think about what you'd think about at the time. Oh, there are about 16 there I've already gone in for yet, and a lot more are last. Another 20 or so. So I'm going to be going in. <laughs> and so, after nearly two years of this nonsense, I think it's about the right time to highlight a bunch of the strange verbal gaffes, policy blunders, terrible optics, and a ton of straight up lies that Biden has told since he took office. So here's the top 25 of his residency so far. Let's start off things with number 25 when Biden was bragging about the amount of vaccines he purchased. And the order, and, and, and that increases the total vaccine order in the United States by 50%, from 400 million order to 600 million. This is enough vaccine to fully vaccinate 300 Americans. So according to Joe Biden, it's going to take 2 million doses for every one person to be fully vaccinated. This is enough vaccine to fully vaccinate 300 Americans. Now, obviously, this is one of the countless times that Joe Biden misread the teleprompter. But it's also one of those rare moments when Biden realized that he said it wrong and made an attempt to clarify. But we want to make, look, that's, I want to repeat, it'll be enough to fully vaccinate 300 Americans. <laughs> Coming in at number 24, is this moment where Joe Biden was asked a question amid the noise of Marine One. Does immigration need to be in reconciliation? Must it be in reconciliation? What must be what? Now, it's unclear exactly what Biden said, and I'm not saying what I think he said, but I will say what it sounds like he said. What must be what? And as these things tend to go, it went viral which means that it was eventually fact-checked by the media because no one is allowed to have fun with anything. Reuters fact check claims that Biden's response was being misconstrued and that he didn't actually say that his butt's been wiped. On the other hand, Reuters couldn't actually definitively say that he didn't. While his complete phrase is not entirely clear, Reuters was able to confirm that Biden did not say the words that have been attributed to him on social media posts. Of all the things that come out of Biden's mouth, this was not something that needed to be fact-checked. And it really shows the great lengths that the media will go to try and protect him. What must be what? Next, as you may have seen featured on the channel, Biden has problems remembering people's names and or the position that that person holds. Here's some examples. Congress eggs, Auchinclaw sauce, where is she? There you go, Jake. Leaders in civil rights like Karen Nagasaki. And uh, look, health care is part of Abigail, Congresswoman, uh, uh, or your Congresswoman's uh, um, background. But by far, the most glaring example of this comes in at number 23. I took it to instill public confidence in the vaccine. President-elect Harris took it, took hers today for the same reason. Now, when President Harris and I took uh, a virtual tour of a vaccination center in Arizona. Last week, President Harris and I stood in the United States Capitol. And that's why I asked President Harris to travel to the region last August. But all kidding aside, of course, President Harris is a proud Howard alum. So on no less than five separate occasions, the President of the United States got confused and called his Vice President the president. 81 million votes, guys. 81 million votes. Number 22 on the list highlights Joe Biden's vitality or apparent lack thereof. You've been so generous with your time in these difficult days. You and I are going to write yet another chapter in the beautiful story of the friendship between our two nations, the United States of America 
on the Jewish and democratic state of Israel. Both of us who seek to do good. Now, was Biden dozing off? I mean, it sure looks like he was. But for the sake of argument, let's say that Biden was completely awake. Then that begs the question, if he was awake, then why wasn't Joe respectful enough to look at the Israeli prime minister while he was being spoken to? And ultimately, whether or not he was asleep or not is not the issue. It comes down to optics. To be fair, climate conferences are pretty boring, so you can't really blame them. But then there's this underrated clip from Biden attending the commissioning of the USS Delaware. And for comparison, here's Biden with his eyes open and his eyes closed. Clearly, there's a difference. But don't worry, America, <laughs> he wasn't asleep. Joe Biden was just resting his eyes. In at number 21, on June 23rd, 2022, according to the White House description, Biden dropped by a meeting about offshore wind turbines. While there, Biden pulled out a card to refer to some talking points. And photographer Jim Watson captured images showing that Joe Biden was given very specific instructions. You enter the Roosevelt Room and say hello to participants. You take your seat. You give brief comments. And notice that you is capitalized and in bold, you know, just in case he thinks that the instructions are for someone else. Other instructions included you ask a question, you thank participants, and you depart. I don't know who's actually in charge of the country, but it's not Joe Biden. Number 20 happened during a rally at the National Education Association headquarters in Washington, D.C., where Joe Biden acknowledged an unknown woman in the crowd. But guess what? We got a lot to do. You gotta say hi to me. We go back a long way. She was 12, I was 30, but anyway. <laughs> this woman helped me get an awful lot done, at any rate. She was 12, I was 30, this woman helped me get an awful lot done. The fact that the Biden supporters laughed along to this is very concerning. She was 12, I was 30, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of creepy, cringy Joe Biden, Here's number 19. Guess what? Employers can't find workers. I said, yeah, pay them more. What's happening? The first thing I asked out of the election results, I said, how did I do in Scranton? I won every precinct. I wrote the bill on the environment. I got them $1.9 trillion relief so far. They're going to be getting checks in the mail that are consequential this week. A lot has been happened already. Possibilities. Possibilities. We can do anything. Guess what? It grows the economy. Benefits everybody. Hurts nobody. If you take a look at what, what economy is growing, the United States. I think it's time to give ordinary people a tax break. You know, I notice when you all do that, everybody benefits. Because the moment it opens, it will be disbanded. You hear me? It will blow up. That's not right. That's not fair. Don't pay a cent. Not a single little red cent. But don't let up now. Don't let up now. Pay your fair share. But just pay a little bit. Remember, I'm your commander in chief. Get vaccinated. Now you got infrastructure. 
Number 18 is a classic Joe Biden tall tale concerning his hometown of Claymont, Delaware. I lived in a fence line community called Claymont, Delaware. We used to get up in the morning, not a joke, when I get driven to the little school, I went up the street, turn on the windshield wiper in the fall, in the fall of the first frost, and literally be an oil slick in the window, not a joke, an oil slick in the window. That's why an awful lot of us, including me, have bronchial asthma. However, according to Joe Biden's health summary, there is no mention of bronchial asthma. In fact, the summary states, lung examination, oxygen saturation, and chest imaging are entirely normal. And for clarity, asthma is a lung disease. And Dr. O'Connor specifically states that Joe Biden has no lung disease at all now and that chest x-rays were normal. So when Joe Biden claimed that he has bronchial asthma, he is either A, lying, or B, his doctor is covering up the fact that Biden has bronchial asthma and Biden let it slip. But then nine months later, Biden brought up the whole oil slick on the windshield story again. I grew up in a place called Claymont, Delaware, which has a more oil refineries than Houston, Texas had in its region, just across the line in Pennsylvania and all the prevailing winds were our way. And guess what? The first frost, you know what was happening. You had to put on your windshield wipers to get literally the oil slick off the window. So to recap, Biden claims that the prevailing winds blew oil from oil refineries onto the family's car windshield. And for some reason, it was only noticeable in the fall and winter. I mean, wouldn't you see these oil slicks all year round? That's why I and so damn many other people I grew up have cancer. And that was startling. The president of the United States saying that he has cancer is a big deal. But of course, most people assumed, or at least hoped, that it was a gaffe. And the Republican National Committee was quick to seize on it by posting a tweet, did Joe Biden just announce he has cancer? And the fact checker from the Washington Post, Glenn Kessler, responded by saying, how dumb is this tweet? Check out Biden's medical report. Before he became president, he had non-melanoma skin cancers removed. Has no one at RNC Research ever had this common procedure? However, skin cancer is caused by the sun and not oil that magically blows through the air. Not to mention that Biden said, I have cancer, not had cancer. That's why I and so damn many other people I grew up have cancer. So no, Biden doesn't have cancer. Well, at least not that we know of. Number 17 can be defined in a single word or something. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was in the foot, uh, foot, foot, excuse me, the foothills of the Himalayas with Xi Jinping. So during an event celebrating the first African-American woman confirmed to the Supreme Court, not to mention the first not to be able to define what a woman is, Biden decided to tell a story about President Xi Jinping of China. Xi Jinping, traveling with him, I guess we traveled 17,000 miles when I was vice president. I don't know that for a fact. So Biden claims that he actually traveled 17,000 miles with Xi Jinping and then immediately says, I don't know that for a fact. Got it. But long story short, Biden has been making this false claim for years. The reality is that A, according to an extensive fact check by the Washington Post, Biden never actually traveled 17,000 miles with Xi Jinping. And B, according to my research, which includes photographic evidence and Biden's trip itinerary, which I featured previously in this video, Biden was never in the foothills of the Himalayas with Xi Jinping, but he keeps saying that he was because Joe Biden is a pathological liar. I was in the foot, uh, foot, foot, excuse me. Next, on July 4th, 2021, the seven day average of COVID cases had dropped nearly 375% since April, and Joe Biden stood on the South Lawn of the White House to celebrate. This year, the 4th of July is a day of special celebration. We are closer than ever to declaring our independence from a deadly virus. So today, while the virus hasn't been vanquished, we know this, it no longer controls our lives. 
However, like his predictions on, well, everything, Joe Biden was wrong. And it turned out to be his mission accomplished moment. On July 2nd, the seven day moving average was just under 14,000 new cases a day. In less than three weeks time, cases rose by 241%. And by the first week in September, the seven day average had risen 1,081%. And that brings us to number 15, when on September 9th, 2021, Joe Biden went on television to address that rise in COVID cases. I want to emphasize that the vaccines provide very strong protection from severe illness from COVID-19. That if you are fully vaccinated, your risk of severe illness from COVID-19 is very low. In fact, based on available data from the summer, only one out of every 160,000 fully vaccinated Americans was hospitalized for COVID per day. Recent data indicates there is only one confirmed positive case per 5,000 fully vaccinated Americans per day. So what Joe Biden was saying was that at the time, if you were vaccinated, breakthrough cases were rare and that hospitalizations were super duper rare. And this is something that should have been celebrated, right? For the vast majority of you who have gotten vaccinated, I understand your anger at those who haven't gotten vaccinated. Then why is there any anger? Joe Biden just said, that if you were vaccinated, that your chances of having a breakthrough case was one in 5,000. That's 0.02%. My message to unvaccinated Americans is this. We've been patient, but our patience is wearing thin and your refusal has cost all of us. So three months earlier, Biden proclaimed that the virus no longer controls our lives, but now he's blaming the unvaccinated for getting the vaccinated sick. You can't make this stuff up, guys. And in a last ditch effort to get more Americans vaccinated, Biden decided to break the law. My job as president is to protect all Americans. So tonight, I'm announcing that the Department of Labor is developing an emergency rule to require all employers with 100 or more employees that together employ over 80 million workers to ensure their workforces are fully vaccinated. But the OSHA mandate was constitutionally dubious, not to mention very illegal. And the Supreme Court ultimately ruled that the Department of Labor didn't have the authority to force employers to implement a policy and it never went into effect. Biden's anger had nothing to do with protecting the vaccinated. The reality is, that Joe Biden promised to crush the virus. And then when cases started to rise dramatically after his July 4th mission accomplished moment, Biden needed someone to blame because nothing is ever Joe Biden's fault. Next, here's constitutional scholar Joe Biden. This is a nation that honors our constitution. We do not reject it. MAGA Republicans do not respect the constitution. However, when it comes to the second amendment, no amendment to the Constitution is absolute. And no amendment to the Constitution is absolute. Uh-huh. So in at number 14 is when Joe Biden attempts to justify his anti-gun stance by repeatedly lying about the Second Amendment. And I might add, the Second Amendment from the day it was passed limited the type of people who could own a gun and what type of weapon you could own. You couldn't buy a cannon. But from the very beginning, the Second Amendment didn't say you can own any gun you want, as big as you want. You couldn't buy a cannon when, in fact, the Second Amendment passed. Biden has been making false claims about cannon ownership for a long time, and it's been fact-checked and debunked by several outlets, including PolitiFact. Not to mention that the Washington Post has fact-checked Biden on this multiple times and has even pleaded with him to stop saying it. Biden has already been fact-checked on this claim, and it has been deemed false. We have no idea where he conjured up this notion about a ban on cannon ownership in the early days of the Republic, but he needs to stop making this claim. And then he conflates your Second Amendment rights with deer hunting. What do you think the deer you're hunting or wear Kevlar vest? What the hell you need 20 bullets for? You must be a hell of a terrible shot. <laughs> I'm serious. Think about it. Ban assault weapons with high capacity magazines hold up a hundred rounds. You think the deer are wearing Kevlar vests? 
And I'd say, how many, how many deer out here are wearing Kevlar vest? You know, no, but I'm, but I'm seriously, think, think about it. But of course, the Second Amendment isn't about deer hunting and hunters walking around with 100 round mags. It's about your God-given right to defend yourself against criminals, a tyrannical government, and or an invading army. But coming in at lucky number 13, Joe Biden has a counter argument. Those who say the blood of the, the blood of patriots, you know, and all the stuff about how we're going to have to move against the government. Well, the tree of liberty is not water with the blood of patriots. What's happened is that there are never been, if you wanted to think you need to have weapons to take on the government, you need F-15s and maybe some nuclear weapons. Whoa. It kind of sounds like that Joe Biden is threatening American citizens with F-15s and nuclear weapons. <laughs> no, nothing to see here, folks. And for those brave right-wing Americans who say it's all about keeping America, keeping America's independent and safe, if you want to fight against the country, you need an F-15. You need a, something a little more than a gun. No, I'm not joking. Think about this. Think about the rationale we use. So Biden claims that if you want to successfully fight against the government, you're going to need more than guns. Sure, okay. But at the same time, Joe Biden and the Democrats have claimed for nearly two years that when a bunch of unarmed protesters went to the Capitol on January 6th, that American democracy was on the verge of death. Got it. You need F-15s and nuclear weapons. Next, there's one of the biggest foreign policy meltdowns in our nation's history, the withdrawal of United States troops from Afghanistan. And at number 12, ABC's George Stephanopoulos asked Joe Biden about it. We've all seen the pictures. We've seen those hundreds of people packed into a C-17. We've seen Afghans falling. That was four days ago, five days ago. It happened days ago, George. Why are you bringing that up? Come on, man. So you don't think this could have been handled, this actually could have been handled better in any way? No mistakes? No, I, I, I don't think it could have been handled in a way that there, we, we're going to go back in hindsight and look, but the idea that somehow there's a way to have gotten out without chaos ensuing, I don't know how that happens. And then one week later, because of this bumbling idiot, 13 service members lost their lives in a suicide bombing. And during their dignified transfer event at Dover Air Force Base, this happened. And Biden got slammed for this. Service members not only died under his command, but they died because of his incompetence as commander in chief. And when you view the video, you can tell that Biden knows that he probably shouldn't be checking his watch because notice that he did it in a way to try and make it look less obvious that he was looking at it. And what's even more insulting is that there's time-stamped photographic evidence that Biden had checked his watch at multiple times. From an optics perspective, this makes him look like an impatient child. It's incredibly disrespectful. And it should be no surprise that during the botched withdrawal, Biden's approval rating sunk below 50%, and hasn't recovered since. At number 10 is from Easter 2022, when Biden started talking to a reporter in a crowd about Afghanistan, and a very special guest magically appeared to whisk him away. For four years, you'd hear from the left that the world is laughing at Donald Trump. But with Joe Biden, they're so afraid that he might say something stupid that they have to send staffers in bunny suits to distract him and lead him around like he's a child. Again, it comes down to optics. Do you, do you think that other countries see this and think that Biden is the most powerful man in the world? Yeah, sure. All I know is that the Easter Bunny won't be doing that again. Hey guys, hey guys, get away in line like everybody else. This for Brandon. Oh, what? Ah. Ah. Next at number nine is when Biden spoke at a conference on hunger, nutrition, and health. And as presidents are wont to do, Biden acknowledged members of Congress attending the event. And I want to thank all of you here for in including bipartisan elected officials like Representative Governor, Senator Braun, Senator Booker, 
Representative Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be here to help make this a reality. So Jackie would be former Representative Jackie Wolarski, and I say former because unfortunately, the Congresswoman died in a car crash back on August 3rd. And you'd think that Joe Biden would know this as he put out a statement regarding her death saying, Jill and I are shocked and saddened by the death of Congresswoman Jackie Wolarski of Indiana. And the excuse from the White House press secretary was that the Congresswoman was on Biden's mind because he was meeting her family later in the week. He uh, looks very much looks forward to discussing her remarkable legacy of public service with them when he sees her family this coming Friday. He said, Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? She must not be here. No, I totally understand. I just, I just explained she was on top of mind. So let me get this straight. The late Congresswoman was on top of mind for Joe Biden because he was planning on honoring her at a bill signing because she recently died which is why he called out to her. The confusing part is why, if she and the family is top of mind, does the president think that she's living and in the room? I don't find that confusing. Calling out to a dead woman, it's not confusing. It's completely normal, America. Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was. She was and at number eight, less than two weeks after the Where's Jackie incident, Biden gave remarks in Hagerstown, Maryland, and this is how it began. Let me start off with two words. Made in America. Made in America. Not sure which is worse. The fact that Biden can't read a teleprompter and literally screws up every single speech, or that Biden supporters are absolute sheep that will cheer for anything. Made in America. And that's not hyperbole. I'm not joking about that, as you know. <laughs> what adult. And when Congresswoman Lauren Boebert tweeted two words, let's go Brandon, it was clearly a reference to Joe Biden's flub. And thousands of people took to Twitter to call her dumb, a moron, and an idiot. And by doing so, they were inadvertently insulting Joe Biden. Great job, geniuses. And what makes this even more ridiculous is that Biden made the following claim just a few weeks prior. How would you say your mental focus is? Oh, it's focused. <laughs> I, say it's, I think it's, I, I haven't, look. Two words, made in America. On May 23rd, during a press conference in Tokyo, Biden was asked about aggression from China towards Taiwan, and that moment comes in at number seven. Are you willing to get involved militarily to defend Taiwan if it comes to that? Yes. You are. That's the commitment we made. Soon after, the White House had to walk this back and said that U.S. policy regarding Taiwan hasn't changed and that Mr. Biden reiterated our commitment under the Taiwan Relations Act to provide Taiwan with the military means to protect itself. Now, under that act, Congress is committed to selling weapons to Taiwan for its self-defense, but the act doesn't say specifically whether or not the United States is militarily obligated to defend Taiwan in the event of an attack. Furthermore, the White House, under every presidency, has never come straight out and said that it would defend Taiwan with our troops. This is called strategic ambiguity, and Joe Biden seemingly killed that policy. Mr. President, is the policy of strategic ambiguity towards Taiwan dead? No. Could you explain? No. Mr. President, would you send troops to um, Taiwan if China invaded? My policy has not changed at all. I stated that when I made my statement yet. So to be clear, Biden said yes, that the U.S. would defend Taiwan militarily. And the White House was like, no, that's not what he said. But then, during a 60 Minutes interview in September, Biden said it again. What should Chinese... President Xi know about your commitment to Taiwan. Would U.S. forces defend the island? Yes, if in fact there was an unprecedented attack. After our interview, a White House official told us U.S. policy has not changed. Officially, the U.S. will not say whether American forces would defend Taiwan. But the problem is that Joe Biden, the so-called commander-in-chief, 
has now unequivocally said that U.S. forces would defend Taiwan. Twice! And the fact that the White House has to step in and walk back so much of what he says really calls into question who is running the country. Because again, clearly it ain't Joe Biden. And speaking of walking back, in March 2022, amidst Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Biden flew overseas to meet with NATO, the European Union, and the G7, and made some of the biggest gaffes of his residency. And Peter Ducey from Fox News asked about them. Are you worried that other leaders in the world are gonna start to doubt that America is back if some of these big things that you say on the world stage keep getting walked back? What's getting walked back? Uh, it sounded like you told US troops they were going to Ukraine. And you're going to see when you're there, some of you've, you've been there, you're going to see, you're going to see women, young people standing, standing in the middle of the front of a damn tank, just, just saying, I'm not leaving. I'm holding my ground. It sounded like you said it was possible the U.S. would use a chemical weapon. If chemical weapons were used in Ukraine, would that trigger a military response from NATO? It would, re it would trigger a response in kind. And it sounded like you were calling for regime change in Russia. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. And despite the video evidence showing that Biden did in fact say those three things. None of the three occurred. None of the three occurred? None of the three. In the number five, we explore Biden's failures regarding inflation. And by the way, talk of inflation. The overwhelming consensus is going to pop up a little bit and then go back down. No one's talking about this great, great deal. You know. So again, if it turns out that what I've done so far, what we've done so far, is a mistake, it's going to show. Oh, it's showing all right. During Biden's first year in office, inflation rose from 1.4% annually to 7%. This is around the time that the White House was using the term transitory inflation. The vast majority of the experts, including Wall Street, are suggesting that it's highly unlikely that it's going to be long-term inflation that's going to get out of hand. We will, in fact, reduce inflation, reduce inflation, reduce inflation. But three months later, inflation was not being reduced. And economists were saying that inflation was here to stay for a while. The Wall Street Journal recently talked to like 67 uh, financial experts who said that they, they saw high inflation going all the way or deep into 2022. Do you think it's gonna last for a while? I, I don't think so. I don't think it will last if, depending what we do, if we stay exactly where we are, yes. If we don't make these investments, yes. And yet, despite these investments, inflation is higher than it's been in 40 years. And even though we are clearly in a recession. Our economy is strong as hell. The internal Inflation is worldwide. It's worse off everywhere else it is in the United States. Biden's claims should be labeled as misinformation. First, our economy is not strong as hell because we've had two negative quarters of GDP, which technically means we're in a recession. Second, inflation isn't higher everywhere else in the world. Of the G20 countries, these 13 currently have a lower inflation rate than the United States. And worldwide, there are 80 countries that have a lower inflation rate. Not to mention that a major contributor to high inflation is high gas prices. And that stems directly from Biden's green energy policy and not Russia's war with Ukraine, by the way, no matter how many times Biden says it. Putin's price hike, Putin's price hike, Putin's price hike. Now Putin's price hike, price hike is hitting Americans at the pump. In other words, President Ice Cream Man is lying to you. He always has, and he always will. Our economy is strong as hell. Back in October 2021, professional race car driver Brandon Brown won the NASCAR Xfinity Series Sparks 300. And during the after race interview, the crowd was chanting, F Joe Biden, but an NBC sports reporter said that they were saying something else. Brandon, you also told me, as you can hear the chants from the, the crowd, 
Let's go, Brandon. Brandon, That's you right. told me you were gonna kind. And with that, Let's Go Brandon was born. It became a huge meme that has pretty much become the go-to insult when it comes to everything Joe Biden. Across this country, we've seen this new phenomenon lately, chanted at sporting events and on signs. The phrase is, let's go Brandon, a sort of code for a profane slogan attacking President Biden. What does the president make of that? I don't think he spends much time focused on it or thinking about it. And that's a shame, because coming in at number four, Biden and his wife, Dr. First Lady, were taking phone calls for NORAD's Santa Tracker hotline and this magic moment happened. Well, I hope you have a wonderful hey, Christmas. Well, yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas as well. Oh, Merry thank Christmas you. and let's go Brandon. Let's go Brandon, I agree. <laughs> to this day, I can't believe he said it. What a moron. Also, the best Christmas present ever. <laughs> hey, by the way, where are you in Oregon? Where's your home? I think we lost you. Yeah. Even Dr. Jill was like, what the f Joe? Let's go, Brandon, I agree. <laughs> Number three on the list really requires no introduction. <laughs> yep, Joe Biden fell over while on a bike that was standing still. And he even had one foot firmly on the ground already. So falling over takes a really special kind of talent. And what makes this ironic is the fact that during the 2020 campaign, Biden compared his health and stamina to Donald Trump's. Some people are always in a hurry. They run when they could walk, race up steps when others take it slow. When Joe Biden's president, America is just going to have to keep up. Look at how he steps and look how I step. Watch how I run up ramps and he stumbles down ramps, okay? Come on. Yes, Joe, let's do that. Here's number two on the list. <laughs> Say what you want about President Trump, but you've never seen him trip while walking up a flight of stairs, let alone trip three times in a row. My prediction? Joe Biden is going to be the first sitting president to break his hip. Oh, 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 yeah. Guys, we did it. We finally reached the number one spot on our list, but it needs a little setup. On August 25th, 2022, Joe Biden decided to ramp up his attacks on Republicans. The MAGA Republicans don't just threaten our personal rights and economic security. They're a threat to our very democracy. Trump and the extreme MAGA Republicans. MAGA Republicans. MAGA Republicans. So how extreme are these MAGA Republicans? If the MAGA Republicans win control of the Congress, it won't matter where you live. These MAGA Republicans won't stop there. The MAGA Republicans are destroying America. <laughs> Woo, they're destroying America! And that inflammatory rhetoric was just a warm up for a speech he would give in Philadelphia titled, the continued battle for the soul of the nation. And that speech is our number one Biden blooper. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. Trump and the extreme MAGA Republicans, the clear and present danger to our democracy. The threat to American democracy is real. We must be stronger, more determined, and more committed to saving American democracy and MAGA Republicans are dis to destroying American democracy. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans. MAGA Republicans. Trump and the extreme MAGA Republicans. MAGA Republicans. MAGA Republicans. MAGA Republicans. MAGA forces are determined to take this country backwards. And Biden's speech backfired in the most glorious way possible, largely due to this singular image of Joe Biden in front of a blood-soaked hellscape background shouting, fists in air, and flanked by Marines. An image that didn't exactly convey unity, but it did scream fascism. When Americans see an image, and the first thing that comes to mind is 1930s Germany, it's safe to say that Joe Biden has an optics problem. And the day after Captain Unity's speech, where he vilified Republicans and called them a threat to democracy, he denied that he said any of it. Do you 
Come on, look, guys. You keep trying to make that case. I don't consider any Trump support. Typical Brandon. And that's it. We made it to the end of the countdown. I hope it was informative and entertaining. A special thanks to Poofy for her help with the script. Follow me on Twitter at Don't Walk Run, and be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel. As always, I hope to see you next time. If there is next time.